Hey everybody, Eric here, Nomadic Fanatic. I just want to make this video real quick as kind of a bonus video. I'm going to let you know right now I'm bumping this video ahead in order. I still have some other videos before I catch up with the tribe, but I've been getting a lot of questions lately asking me if I'm okay and asking me if I have any footage of being run off the road uh, in Arizona. So that's why this video is being bumped ahead. Also, I struggled with the idea of not even wanting to share it with the world because I didn't feel that it had any real value. And that's the whole thing. I'm not just going to keep uh, posting negative stuff like that, but if I feel that there's a lesson or I feel that there's something that needs to be shared with the world, of course I'm going to reach out and do it. So that is why I'm ultimately doing this. Stick around at the end. I want to talk a little bit more about the actual incident itself, uh, how I responded with it, how I'm taking care of it with uh, the police, and where we stand with all that. But first, let's jump right to the actual footage here. I'm going to show you some camera angles from cameras mounted on the side of my RV that shows exactly what's going on during the sequence and why it was so incredibly scary and stupid of the other RV driver. So here we go. So we were driving south on 95 from Quartzsite, and this is a two-lane highway here, one lane in each direction, as you can see. We were actually traveling as a small convoy of eight RVs. We had Aja Pandemonium leading the way, and Terry and Scott were last number eight, and I was car number six, RV number six. And my buddy Andrew is behind me in this clip, which you cannot even see his vehicle because he's giving me so much room at a safe distance. But at some point I started seeing the huge, and I mean huge RV, pass Terry and Scott, and then pass Andrew and get right up on me, ride my butt for about three or four miles. I'm going 55 miles an hour right now, which is the speed limit, a safe distance. There's dips and blind spots, and this guy just continues over and over to try and find another way to pass me and eventually try to pass every single person on this highway in his huge 40-foot Class A motorhome with a tow vehicle. Just there's so many blind spots. Anyway, right about here, he sees an oncoming car. So he hits the brakes and then kind of decides he's just going to try to slide over into me. And I've already let off the gas and going about 45 mile an hour to let this guy go, but there's nowhere for me to go. Right here, you see the dust right here. That's car number one. Head on, pushed him over into the side. The, that car got off the highway to avoid a head-on collision with this idiot. And right here, you can kind of see he's like, well, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just run this RV off the road in my lane since I'm kind of stuck out here in no man's land. Now, you can see the soft sta sand to my right. I have nowhere to go. I am not going to hit that at 45 mile an hour and, and wreck my RV. He finally moves over. There's a car number two avoided a head-on collision at over 55 miles an hour. Car number two that he almost head-on hit somebody that had to get off the highway into the sand to avoid this idiot in an 18-ton killing machine putting everybody's life in danger. It is absolutely amazing. I don't even have words. His plan right there was just to just to literally hit me. He, he came within inches of hitting me and running me off the road, and I've got nowhere to go. I did eventually was able to pull off, but this guy, I mean, you, you got, what is going through his mind? We, we'll never know. We will never know what is this guy's thinking. It None of this phased him after running three cars off the road and all the people behind me. He still went on and passed every single vehicle all the way past Aja until we got a chance to, to uh, stop. And here's what I want to share with you guys. I was able to call the local sheriff's office and tell them what had happened. We got the license plate of the tow vehicle and uh, actually Terry and Scott got a really good uh, shot of that. But I'm just sharing with you. I'm not going to give you their license plate number, but it was an Alberta, Canada license plate number. And I gave all of the files to the police and they were very, very thankful. They said, this is, this is some amazing video and you got so many different angles and showed everything that happened so well. For the record, guys, you can't just call the police and give them a license plate and say, this guy did this. Unless the cops actually see it or unless there's video to prove it, there's nothing they can do. The, the police department is investigating this and I hope that there's going to be some resolve because to be perfectly honest with you guys, this driver of this huge RV and tow car is, I'm sorry, but eventually they're going to kill somebody. It didn't happen today. Uh, there were some near misses, but this person has no regard for anyone's life, including the people in that RV that he is driving that are passengers. I hate to say it, but without um, any consequences from this, and I, there are going to be some consequences from what I understand, this person eventually is going to kill somebody, and that's a sad fact.
And do you know one of the things that amazes me most? I just want you to think about this, guys. If you want to be a long-haul trucker, a semi-truck driver, or even a school bus driver, think of the incredible, intense amounts of training you have to have to get behind the wheel and to be able to drive this on our highways. I mean, there's incredible things to understand to be able to be a safe truck driver or school bus driver or tow truck driver to buy these big rigs and to be able to drive them safely. However, you can simply go to an RV shop and you can buy a 40 foot RV or you can buy a 40 foot fifth wheel and put it on your truck and then tow a boat behind the fifth wheel here in Arizona. You can actually do that. And then simply just drive out onto the road with absolutely no training, no understanding about anything. It It's, it's baffling. And I hate to say it, but... <laughs> Compared to what I've seen lately on the road, it may be time for some change here, at least in this country. I don't think that the majority of people behind the wheel of an RV or towing a fifth wheel are safe enough to be able to drive on these highways. I, I, I think this makes it perfectly clear. I would love to have some kind of a certification for any anything over 20 feet or, or, or whatever. You need to have some kind of education because... I don't know. And the last thing I want to just share with you all is everybody is okay. We were all a little shaken up after this incident. Nobody got hurt, though. That's great, awesome news. And what I can share with you guys is if you're ever in this situation, as soon as you see some idiot in a semi-truck or a big RV dangerously passing people behind you, just get off the highway. Don't slow down. Don't don't try to just be nice to the person. Get off the highway. Find your escape route immediately and let this person get past you. And if it's really dangerous, call the police and let them know what mile marker you're at and where this person's heading in the future so that they can maybe do something about it. And, and as always, guys, record everything. If you don't have a dash cam, get one. Record everything. Again, I'm okay. Everybody's okay. We're moving on. My videos will be back in sequence here in a couple days from Arizona. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.